Okay, let's uh, let's pray, right? We just um, just ask the Lord to speak to you today, and let's commit the rest of the day into His hands and say, Lord, you mold me, you shape me, you speak to me, you write your word upon my heart. Just in your own words, just speak to the Lord. Right? Just go ahead, just talk to the Lord. Um, just welcome Him. Just tell Him how glad you are to be in His presence, um, because the Lord says that He rejoices over us. Now just tell the Lord, Lord, we are glad to be here with you um, in your presence, God. Thank you for this new day that you've given us. Thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you for this life that you've given us. Just go ahead. Just talk to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Just have a conversation with the Lord. And thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Just go ahead. In your own language, you know, the language that you're comfortable with, just go ahead. Just talk to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Welcome you, Jesus. I want to walk with you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I want to open my heart to you, Jesus. <clears throat> Yes, Lord, I want to see you, hear you, know you. Yes, God, thank you. Have your way in my life. Let your will be enthroned in my heart. On top of all my wills and all my desires and everything, Lord, let your will, your thoughts, your desires, Lord, let it be enthroned. Meaning, let it take precedence, let it take first place in my life, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name, God, because you are the one true God. You are alive. You are here with us. And Lord, what an awesome privilege, Lord, to know you. And what an awesome privilege to talk to you, Lord, and have you speak to us. And Lord, we, we commit this day, this time into your mighty hands. We commit ourselves, Lord. And especially, Lord, I pray for this, this course, this subject, oh God. Lord, I pray that you will give each one of us a revelation of what it means to praise you, what it means to worship you, and why, and how, and all that, God. And I just pray, Father God, that, um, that you will raise us up, Lord, to be a community of believers, a community of worshipers, Father God, who will worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. Yes, Lord, even before we worship, I pray that you would give us a revelation, Lord, an understanding, Lord, so that we might recognize who you are in our worship, Father God. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, I pray that we will, we will not just be worshipers with our, Lord, with our words, oh God, that we will be worshipers in spirit and in truth, Father God. Yes, Master, that, um, that our hearts, oh God, will be intertwined with the words that we speak, the songs that we lift up, God and are the lives that we live, O oh Master. Let everything come together, Lord, in an act of worship before you, Master. We thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. OK, so um, this semester, we are looking at a very uh, interesting course, very practical course, right? Um, and what is it? It's called Praise and Worship. Okay, so um, the, we're going to be looking into the word. It's also a little uh, in, in intense in the sense we're going to be looking at different scriptures. Uh, we're going to be looking at different passages and uh, getting an understanding, a holistic understanding of what it is to, um, to praise the Lord, what it is to worship the Lord, and what does praise and worship really mean, right? So, um, um, so yeah, if you look at your course notes, uh, online students, you will have the um, close um, in the. If you go to the classwork section in Google Classroom, you will see the, um, the your the PDF, the course notes, which are uploaded there. So you can download it onto your computer or to your phone, and you can use it, or you can just click it and use it online, and you can follow through, right? So if you look at the course um, uh, objective, it's designed to teach us the principles. It uh, uh, also, you know, uh, designed to take us deeper. You know, the purpose of personal worship, the purpose of congregational worship, and so on. So um, content's very interesting. Starts with uh, definitions and uh, introduction, and goes all the way to you know how we can live a lifestyle of a life of worship. Okay, and there are some recommended readings also. Like if you if you are interested. 
uh, you can you know uh, all these books are mentioned there and uh, you can either find them online or maybe in a in a library and you can um, you can find that um, yeah so these books are there um, some very 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 good books um, you know exploring worship by bob sog sog is uh, you know it's a very uh, in depth extensive you know the first one that is mentioned there uh, very good uh, book i recommend that highly and also jack hayford you know everything in fact um, we remember doing um, uh, a, a kind of a study on this book called the unquenchable worshipper by matt redman you now that is bound to really um, you know speak to your heart and change everything uh, about you know about how we relate to god in worship you know, unquenchable worshipper uh, so all these books are good so want to recommend that to you okay so when we say um, uh, let me just uh, share the notes here for the online students Okay. Um, okay, I hope that's uh, clear enough, beginner. Okay, so uh, when it comes to praise and worship, what does uh, what do you mean? I just want to you know what do you think? Uh, what picture comes to your mind? I uh, just want to understand from all of you. You know, we are all from different backgrounds, uh, church backgrounds, and and all that. You know, even sometimes you know religious backgrounds, and we've come to know the Lord. So when we say praise and worship, what comes to your mind? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when we say uh, praise and worship? Anyone? giving glory to jesus huh gratitude thanksgiving honoring god okay huh singing showing off faith is it faith in the lord okay sacrifice holy spirit connecting with god online students um okay music and thanking okay anything else praise and worship sorry inviting inviting the lord into our hearts i see okay revelation of adoration respect okay what else to adore him yeah adoration respect okay anything that comes to your mind peace sense of peace okay so all of us have some picture in our minds you know you don't have to think too deeply you know all of you thought very well and said okay what is the right answer and you know giving the appropriate answer but what really comes to your mind you know first thing praise and worship like right. uh crowd of people singing hands lifted up you know that's that's more like a you know what comes to your mind right see for a long time for me praise was fast songs worship was slow songs honestly right that is what came to my mind okay after becoming a believer after you know being in church for some time youth groups and all for some time and what came to my, what came to my mind was okay praise fast songs worship slow songs right surrender to the lord thanksgiving and showing love awesome an expression of gratitude okay thank you thank you for all those responses responses okay so so let's look at this let's look at this term before we actually look into the word what does it generally mean you know like a a dictionary 
definition? What does it say? You know, what is praise and worship? It just means that, okay, uh, the dictionary defines worship as an act of expressing love. It's an act, which means you do something to express, to show love, respect, honor for someone or something, right? So it's an act. So you do something. And what you, why, are you, why are you doing that? But because you want to communicate, you want to express right? love, respect, honor for someone. So that is, that is what the, the dictionary would say as worship. And there's an old English word. Uh, they would say it's an Anglo-Saxon word, which, which actually, you know, which, from which this comes, worship. It comes from the root word called worth-ship. Okay, worship, which means you're giving something of value, you're, you're attributing some value or respect or worth to someone or something, right? So you're giving of respect, you're giving of honor, and you're valuing something or someone very highly. Right? So it comes from that root word, worship, right? So. When we look at all of us, believers, Christians, when we look at the world outside, okay, those who do not know the Lord, even atheists, we see that human beings are designed, created to do this, to highly value, to give themselves over to, to surrender, something, you know, to go wow at something that is awesome, bigger than them, right, magnificent. We are created, we are designed to do that. Okay, Not just Christians, not just believers. Right? Those who do not know Jesus also worship, yes or no? Yeah, because, you know, the human heart is really drawn, is really hungry and it's been designed to give oneself over, to surrender, to yield, and to say, oh, this is amazing. This is of very high value. This is of worth to me. To surrender, to give oneself over. Even atheist worship. What do you think of that? Yes or no? Atheist is someone who believes that there's no God. But they're also believers, right? They believe in something. So even they worship, which means that they might be worshiping an ideal, they might be having some philosophy. Right? They might be, except that in the place of God, there's something else. It could be position. It could be power. It could be, you know, maybe their own family. It could be themselves. Right? So they are also giving something of very high value and giving themselves completely over to it. You know, it could be nature. It could be creation. It's just they're giving themselves over to it. So we see that all human beings are created to give themselves over, to surrender themselves, to value something very highly and completely be in awe of that. So we're all created to worship. And that's how God has created us, to worship. Now, in our brokenness, in our sinfulness, and in our, you know, in our iniquity and everything, the object of worship changes. Romans, the book of Romans talks about that. Like, you know, in our rebellion, we've actually replaced God with something else. Humanity has replaced God with something else in order to give that worship. Why? Because there is that inner cry, you know, to give, to attribute something of worth and value and respect and honor and give ourselves, surrender ourselves completely over. So we see that worship is something that is universal. Right? All creation, all human beings, Created to be in awe of our creator. Now, instead of our creator, where there could be other things coming in place, but we are all created to worship. Okay, that's something for us to keep in mind. We are all created to worship. And then, yes, the ch church also, of course, in church, there's a lot of talk about worship, right? Worship, we say praise and worship, we use it interchangeably. And then in any meeting, you go and say, okay, First, th first thing that happens is, no, let's have praise and worship. So the guys who are leading praise and worship, they better be there on time, they, right? Sound check and everything, and you know. So, so then we say, okay, 
sometimes in meetings it is as if the worship time or you know the praise and worship the singing that happens is a filler before the main thing right it's like the appetizer right the main thing is coming that is a message that is a ministry type but then this is just to get the crowd warmed up right in every excess you know if you want to play a game you go and warm up right you do some stretches or something so that you don't pull a cramp right when you're playing a you know game like football or whatever and sometimes we treat it like that it's like oh it's a warm up come on get breathe uh, stretch your hands raise your hands you know jump up and down turn around say hi to someone you know it's like sometimes we treat it like that and of late contemporary times worship has become a genre of music right you have heavy metal you have hard rock you have rap you have hip hop and then you have another category which is gospel worship and there are awards given and all that right so when you look at praise and worship in the church itself what is it we need to ask that question what is it you know is it the time before the service starts or the time before the message is it singing right is it the warm up what is it so because all this happens in today's church environment right so we need to ask ourselves that question okay look at these comments okay if you're in the notes okay, okay. let's look at some of these co comments you know um by the th third song i was really worshiping okay some people say bro that when that song no that is when i was worshiping that is when i felt so the question is okay what were you doing before that <laughs> okay so another another comment you know worship gets me to the place where i don't have to think about anything it means my mind is completely shut down okay but worshiping god actually requires using our mind you know thinking about him recognizing him meditating about his word right so it's not completely switching off or uh, our minds going blank no and then people ask okay will there be worship at the meeting um you know what they really mean is will there be a time of corporate worship but then you know uh things like that you know that singing time is will there be worship um then some comments like with only 20 minutes we really don't have we really didn't have time to worship we just had 20 minutes you know how can we worship so things like that right uh, or i really love your worship you know this person is a real worshipper and so uh, it's it's good that we come to a place of understanding you know all these uh, different ideas all these different comments are there you know going around in the church and and so on so um, even in the christian circle so we, it, it's good that as believers we understand okay, let's look at some definitions okay so these are people who have tried to you know define uh, what worship is and so on so this um, you know that this dutch person humanist uh, not a believer but uh, this person says about definition he says every definition is dangerous okay every definition why because it brings focus to some things but it leaves out a whole lot of other things you know if you are defining something right so he says every definition is uh, uh kind of restrictive it's sometimes dangerous okay um so but then if you look at worship you know these are some things that we can think of you know acknowledging that someone or someone else is greater is worth more that is something that we do in terms of worship but that's not all right we acknowledge that god is greater bigger we are you know acknowledging that he is above all all powerful and all that okay. worship is also the believer's response to all that they are right with our mind with our will with our emotions with our spirit our response to what god says who he is so you know you can go through the notes there are you know several ways of um, how people have defined and explained worship but you see that it falls short of explaining what the whole thing is what worship is right 
You know, this is an interesting definition. You know, I'm at point number six. You know, Bob Coff, uh, Coughlin, he's written many uh, you know, articles and books, and he himself is a you know worship leader. Um, you know, probably the 80s, 90s, and he's still you know leading worship. Um, this is what he says, right? Christian worship is the response of God's redeemed people, okay, to His self-revelation that exalts God's glory in Christ in our minds, affections, and wills in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, he says, okay, this worship that we're talking about is is the response of God's redeemed people. Okay, so first thing we see that it's you know, what he says that Christian worship is this, which means that, yeah, like we said, there can be worship, all other kinds of worship, right? Where the object of worship is not Jesus, it's not the Lord, right? So he's saying, okay, Christian worship, which means that we are talking about Jesus, we are talking about Christ. So Christian worship is this, it's a response, which means that God does something, God has already done something, he's redeemed us. It's a response of the redeemed people. It's our response. What is a response? And you say response, hey, he responded. What what huh? Answer. Okay, so when you when, when I get when I ask a question, when you answer, that means I'm getting a response. Okay. So is it always an answer or sorry? Some an action. Yeah. So a response is, you know. When someone does something, says something, what do you do? What do you act? What do you do? What do you say? What do you feel? Right? It's all that. If somebody stamps your foot, there is a response. Right? You respond in pain. You respond in irritation. Right? You respond in frustration. Right? What do you do? Right? So it's the response of God's redeemed people. In response to what he has done, okay, to his revelation, what are we responding to? We are responding to his revelation. Okay, what does revelation mean? This self revelation, what does revelation mean? Anyone? Sorry, knowledge. Okay, here's a, here's a screen. I'm just lifting the screen to show you what is behind that screen. What is that? That's a, I'm revealing. There's a revelation. Something there that is behind, which we could not see. But then when we, when we lift that, we see, hey, what is behind that? Right? What is behind that screen? So, sorry? It's like truth. Okay. So it's a, it's a display. It's a disclosure of something that is Something that we did not see earlier, but now we see. So it's our response to what we did not know about God, but He's revealing Himself, right? It's a self revelation of God. So God is revealing Himself, He's showing Himself, He's saying, Hey, this is who I am. And suddenly, in our hearts, in our minds, we see it. The Holy Spirit is revealing Jesus. See that, you know, we've read that verse many times. The Lord is my shepherd, but suddenly it makes sense. It becomes real. Right? That information becomes a revelation. It was just information, but that has become a revelation because to you now it means something. Hey, I knew it was there right before my eyes, but now I see it. It's, it's something deeper. I experience this. Right? So it's a self, it's a response to the self revelation. So God reveals Himself and it happens in fellowship, it happens in communion, right? God reveals Himself and uh, His self revelation, our response to His self revelation, um, okay, that exalts. That exalts God's glory in Christ in our minds, affections, and wills, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, he he put it that way: our, our affections, our minds, our thought processes, our affections, our you know desires, and our wills, our decisions, choices, and everything, um, and how all that is 
put together or drawing us to the Lord Himself, right? And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? It's the Holy Spirit who um, reveals this to us. So you see that it is a response of God's redeemed people. You know? So is music mentioned there? No music. You know, we've already you know, gone into like uh, definitions and what people think and etc. And and you'd be surprised that as we move on, as we look at these scriptures, we see that uh, yeah, music is mentioned, but it's not the whole thing. It's not the whole thing. You know, in our response, we respond with song, we respond with music. Yes, right? but sometimes we make it all about music. Oh, a guitar is not there. Means how can I worship? You know. Do you have keyboard? Without keyboard, you know, how can we worship, right? Sometimes we th think like that, but then worship is our response to God, our response to God's revelation, and right? our response with our will, our mind, our thoughts, our affections, you know, our longing, our desires, everything deep within our spirit, our response to His revelation by the Holy Spirit. So we see that it's not about singing, it's not about, it's not just about singing, I should say that, right? It's not just about singing, it's not just about music, it's not just about, you know, uh, all that, but it's much deeper. Does it involve singing? Yes. Does it involve music? Yeah, it could. But it's not just about that. The main thing is the revelation of Jesus. The main thing is our response to God, to who He is, right? Our response to how He introduces Himself, and then we, when our spirit catches it, our response to that. Okay, okay. So let's move on. You know, we'll um, towards the end, uh, we'll probably have a time for questions. Or um, okay, yeah. So what is praise? Praise, worship, worship, praise. Is it the same thing or different? What do you think? I know the notes talk about something, but what is your understanding of it? What does praise mean? Okay, I want you to do something. Most of you are sitting with another person, but then, okay. Uh, what's your name? Sorry? Kushbu. Okay, so Kushbu, you sit with someone and uh, just for just for now, okay, no, you, just for now, you can leave your notes here. So I want you to turn to the neighbor and say something nice to them, okay? It could be about their shirt that they're wearing, it could be about their hair, hairstyle, it could be uh, about who they are, whatever, if you know the person very well, or say something nice, okay? You understood? Or Abhi, you have to meet, I mean, with them, so since you're alone, with him, with them. Say something nice. Okay, I'll get take two minutes. Okay, uh, online students, how are you going to do that? You can just mention the name of the person. <laughs> uh, you have the name list there. Okay, Sri Raj. Say something nice to Sri Raj. Okay, so something like that. I know it online it's difficult to manage this, but then let's do it. Okay, so. Okay. Done? And and vice versa, like to each other, okay. Okay, you said, yeah. Okay, and so did you say thank you? And the other person said something nice. No, please say thank you. <laughs> okay, right. So what did you do? You said, huh? Yeah, you just you complimented the other person. You said, hey. So what did you say to him, if you don't mind? <laughs> uh -huh. He did nice push-ups. How many? 30. Wow. I can, I can manage only 10 or 11. Today he did? Wow. OK. So 30 push-ups did something like some physical attribute. OK. What did you say? And what did you say to him? You are a good person. Okay, so there's a reason why you said that. Probably you experienced that. Okay, some more. Probably Vinay and uh, what did you say? He's a good-looking man. Okay, okay. He's got a sweet smile. Okay, okay. See, so 
some attributes, some characteristics, right? And uh, it's actually very simple. So that is what praise is. You just said, hey, this is who you are. Right? You said you just gave a compliment. It could be about a physical attribute. It could be something deeper, something about their character. It could be something about what they have done, right? Now, just turn to your person, turn to the person next to you, and say the same thing without words. Can you do it? <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? Right? So we understand that yes, praise is about complimenting. It's about saying something nice. It's not saying some. It's not flattery. What is flattery? You're being dishonest because you want something out of it, brother. There's no one like you. Our sister, you know, you are so kind, and you, even though they might not be, you know, flattery is insincere. You're lying, and maybe you want to get something out of it. No, it's not flattery. So you're saying something sincere, and. Another thing is that praise has to be declared, has to be spoken verbally or acted out. Maybe you know, maybe you're not able to speak. You know, it's it's physical, it's verbal, it's expressive. That's what praise is, right? So let's look at our notes. You know, it's, it means to the dictionary said it means to commend, applaud, to express approval or admiration. You're commending, you're applauding, you're saying, wow, wonderful, good job. You're expressing admiration, approval. So it is a verbal declaration. Okay. Yes, there are times maybe some people cannot do that. But I remember, you know, watching, you know, in front of this tea shop, there were this bunch of people who were actually speaking and they could not actually speak, you know, they uh, verbally they could not speak. Right? They were challenged in that area. But they were having a very expressive conversation, right? They're just, you know, touching each other and then they're saying, hey, that, this, and then, then they're smiling and they're laughing and there's three or four of them. I'm just watching them, you know, spellbound. It's like, wow, they're having a great conversation, right? So it is an expression. It's an approval. It's a commendation, um, but it's verbal. And even if it's not verbal, it can be acted out as well, you know, in terms of jumping and clapping and and you know lifting of hands and waving and all that. It's an it's a uh, it's a, a expression, right? So let's look at this. Um, it's it it is thanksgiving. It's adoration. So we can say that praise is the verbal declaration um, of adoration and thanksgiving for what God has done and for what he has promised to do. And it focuses on his character and his wondrous acts. So it's something beautiful, right? So which means for praise and worship to happen, there needs to be a relationship with God. There needs to be a fellowship. There needs to be a growing, ongoing receiving of revelation right? all that is important right because it is actually commending it's applauding and uh, it is about what god has done in the past it is about what he has promised to do in the future what he is doing even at present right currently what he's doing what he's promised to do in the future and it is focusing on his character it's getting to know him and who he is and what his attributes are See, normally when we don't know the person that well, we will actually probably compliment and applaud on their you know, physical attributes. Oh, nice smile, nice shirt. But when you know the person a little deeper, right, maybe after a month, after two months, after interacting, you will notice that you know, if, you, if you do the same exercise, you say something nice, it will not be about just about the shirt or about the, you know, whatever. It won't be about, it'll, it'll be something deeper, right? So about the character, about who they are on the inside. Right? How did, why did that change? Because it came from a recognition. It came from a understanding about the person, right? 
So also, you know, praise is, it focuses on his character. We get to know him, we get to understand him, and then we applaud, we praise, we commend him. Okay. Another aspect of praise, praise involves sacrifice. Okay. Let's look at uh, Hebrews. And... Um, Let's look at Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Okay. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Okay. If you can turn there, what does it say? It says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. By him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Okay, and then goes on to say something even more profound. No, don't forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Okay, so it talks about this word called sacrifice. Okay, what does sacrifice mean? Sacrifice. In Hindi, it's what? Balidan, right? Is that right? What does it mean in Hindi? Sacrifice, right? So what does sacrifice mean? Just in regular, normal terms. Huh? What does sacrifice mean? Doing something? Doing something to someone without, do, without thinking about oneself. Okay. So being selfless. Hmm. Letting go of your will, is it? Okay. Letting go of will. Okay. You know, when we, normally when we say sacrifice, in the Old Testament, it talks about death. Right? Killing. Something is dying. Right? And in regular terms, when we talk about sacrifice, it's about giving up. Hey, I, I sacrificed my breakfast because someone else wanted it. You sacrifice, you give up, right? And sometimes sacrifice is also taking up. Hey, I, I took up, I, I did this work. I sacrificed my time, but I took on this, this took on this responsibility, and I just wanted to do it for the other person. Okay, so sacrifice is willingly letting go. It's also sometimes willingly taking on something that you don't have to, right? But you take on, you do it anyway. Right? Sacrifice. Okay, so it's giving up. It's taking on, it's also death, right? Death to maybe comfort, death to self-pity, fleshly desires and also. So praise involves sacrifice. If you're going to look at, you know, how Abraham and, you know, others, like in the New Testament, we see Paul and Barnabas, how they worshipped God, they praised God in difficult circumstances, right? Things were not that great. Things were not, in fact, things were not going good at all, but they still, they commended God, they applauded, they approved, they, you know, they, they gave worth and value to God. So we'll talk about that a little later. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, some differences. We're going to talk about worship a little later. Let's talk about, you know, differences between praise and worship. Okay, let's talk about... Uh, Okay, some differences. Okay, so one thing uh, we need to understand first of all is that God does not need our praise. Okay, sometimes we think, okay, uh, it's like hey, if we don't, you know, God actually requires our praise. So that's why we need to praise Him. God doesn't need our praise, okay. but we need to praise Him. Because that is who he is. He's worthy of all the praise and glory and honor. Okay. And we've been created, we've been designed. And that is how we are. We need to praise him. So he God doesn't, you know, he's not like some, you know, something like a, you know, like an egomaniac saying, okay, I I need you to say good things about me all the time. Right. Today, what good thing have you told me? Right. You have not said this. Therefore, you know, something bad is going to happen. No, it's not like that, right? 
but we need to praise him we need to worship him we need to praise him right and god is seeking not just you know not just the praise but he's actually seeking worshipers you know we look at that verse that's an amazing verse the god is seeking people right people with a heart of worship we look at that okay praise okay second thing that we see second point there is that praise can sometimes be distant okay because we are saying that okay god this is who you are this is what you are you know even in our, in our compliments right praise can sometimes be distant but when you look at worship it is intimate okay for us to understand you know when we understand a little more when we look at worship worship is surrender worship for for our hearts to worship for us to worship to yield and surrender we need to have an intimate which means close relationship with someone only then can we worship right so praise we can but then for us to yield and surrender we need to have an intimate a close relationship with him okay and praise is always extroverted it's always obvious like we said you know i can't think a compliment and not express it for a compliment to be expressed for a compliment to be a true compliment it has to be expressed it has to be either texted it has to be emailed it has to be spoken it has to be sung it has to be expressed right which means it is obvious it is put on display for the other person to receive and see and hear but worship need not be i can be quiet but in my heart i can be full of worship and full of surrender and full of yieldedness to god right think about it right we say worship worship you know you don't have to do anything you can just be you know quiet you can be not saying a word you can be not singing anything right not even lifting hands but you just quiet and in an attitude of deep intimate worship so it doesn't have to be obvious it doesn't have to be expressive because it comes from a very close intimate relationship so these are some you know some things that we see you know praise um also involves a like a horizontal element you know what do we mean by that which means that okay you are asking people and pointing people to god you are you know inviting people to god so it involves a horizontal element also where we are telling people hey do you know my god is like this you know we sing some songs like that right uh for example come now is the time to worship come now is the time to give him praise right or songs like uh, how great is our god who am i singing to who am i telling that that thought how great is our god sing with me how great is our god people like you know how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our god right we are actually involving people drawing people of course you are talking about the greatness of god the goodness of god but we see that we are actually gathering people and we are saying how great is our god right so but when it comes to worship it is primarily most often it is vertical directly towards god we're not talking to people we're not drawing people to god we're not saying you know hey, you know have you seen jesus we're not doing that we're saying jesus you are this lord you are so and so so worship has that direct or vertical you know dynamic to it right element to it so we see that these are some differences if we can call it between praise and worship okay. now this is just for our learning this is just for our understanding okay so maybe during supernatural hour and all that don't don't just say okay am i doing praise or am i worshiping don't even think like that when you start thinking like that we're not actually engaging with god right we're engaging with our own minds and preoccupied okay okay any questions here we have about 3 minutes before the break so any questions any uh, anything that you want to add on um 
feel free to ask online students as well. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Difference between praise. Okay, so it's all clear, right? Praise, worship, at least, you know, at some level, that's good. Okay, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Suppose we are praising God, you know, when we... Okay, the question was when we when we worship in tongues, is it praise or worship? Or when we, you know, sing out in tongues, declare in tongues, it is is it praise or worship? Um, really don't know because um, you know when, uh, when in the book of Acts when we see Acts chapter two, they heard them magnify God. Acts chapter ten also in Cornelius' house, they heard them pray in tongues and magnify God. And obviously it was a language which they other people knew. But then, you know, maybe. Uh, it can be like this, you know, it's just my opinion. It can be like maybe at a time of declarative praise when we are engaging in, you know, praying in tongues, maybe it could be a time of you know, adoration and praise and declaring who God is. It could be maybe a moment of free flow of praise, spontaneous praise in tongues. It could be, right? Um, so that's, I'll leave it at that, yeah. Okay, so there's a question. What is the role of music in um, in praise and worship? Okay, and how important is it? Okay, so <clears throat> while we know that you know music is not praise and worship, but we also see that it's not just music that's praise and worship. But we also see, as we go through scripture, as we see in the Psalms, that music plays an import important part in our expression of praise and our expression of worship to God, right? Because it's it's a way to express our deepest emotions, right? So you can say, I love you, Lord. I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I, you know, I worship you. Yes. But when you put a melody to it, I believe that you are engaging more of your emotions, right? When you're engaging a melody, when you're singing it, you're in engaging more of your emotions and you're singing with all your heart. You're expressing with all your heart, right? And, and music enables us to do that, right? While it, is, it has its positive side and it also has a uh, negative side to it, right? So, yeah, we'll come back after the break, and then we'll we'll just spend some more time on that question, right? Um, okay, Anthony, um, we'll take a break. Yeah, all of us we'll take a break and come back in ten minutes at ten a.m. Um, how to download the notes? Go to the classroom section um, in the Google Classroom of this particular course, right? And then you see the notes uploaded there under course material, and you can download the notes from there. Okay, thank you. We'll take a break now. Um, Shani, you have a question? Shani Chapman. Um, I'm not able to hear. I'm not sure if... we we'll wait till after the break. Would you like to type in your question, please? And after the break, we'll, uh, we'll address that. Shani? Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yes. Okay. I, I'm not able to hear, so um, I'll, we'll try to fix that as well. You can just type in... Uh, in the chat section. Thank you. <laughs> 